Well, good morning, everybody. First, let's be clear. This whole thing started with us helping Warren and Sam with this project um, because I said, I think Peter needs to earn some money. <laughs> right, Peter? He's pretty much flat broke and he has things on his wish list. So anyway, Warren, sometimes he'll do hand weeding and on the new beds especially, I guess you want to tell us a little bit or no? Just we have some stick tights that uh, have survived and uh, I just want to get them pulled before they bloom because once they seed out, their seeds go everywhere and they can be a problem down the road. So if we pull them now, we'll avoid bigger problems later on. And which plants are the... See the large green bunches? Like the mm -hmm. dark greens or the lighter green? Uh, the darker green. The darker green. Okay. Those are yep. the stick tight. Those bunches. are stick tight. See how kind of their their branch almost kind of yeah. goes like this a little bit? They'll actually have pretty yellow flowers that turn into nasty seeds that stick to everything. Ah, what? Mm -hmm. So most of them are right here. Yes, but there's some on the other end too. Yeah. And then if you see any maple trees, pull them. Okay. But okay. I want to show you how to do it because you have to grab the base and kind of work it back and forth and pull and then <clears throat> when it comes out you have to tamp down the hole because we don't want to uproot a bunch of cranberry vines. Here, here Joe. One, two. One, no. Joe, do you need another one? Here. here, honey. You need a pair, don't you? I have a pair. Oh. Well, I was going to... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. Getting ready for surgery. That's better. <laughs> okay. Oops. <laughs> Found the finger holes? Yes. Back and forth. Shaking the dirt out. Like that. And then you. Here. See? Put it in your bucket. Okay. You got that? Yep. 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 Here. Here, and here, take big steps, okay? Big steps. Well, they can get quite quickly, too. So we'll do everything from the ditch to the pipe. Actually, we have enough people we can probably Mom. do the whole half. Mom, you know about this you know what I mean? camera? Yep. On this. All right, Joe, here we go. Let's go get this one right here. Come here, Joe. This is what you're looking for, this plant right here. Mom, I am just video. I am videoing, you're right. So Please. this is the one you're looking for, this plant. Please. So reach down, pull it gently. Now step, step on that area right there. Step on it. Step, though, you got to press. There you go, step again. Uh-huh. There you go, and that's it. That's what we're gonna do, okay? Yeah. One of the neat things about being out in the cranberry bed, it's always neat to see nature at work. And I don't know if you all can see that real well. It's pretty sunny out here, but there's a really, really pretty spider web here. And just the way the sun is shining with the little bits of dew on it, it's really pretty. All right, Joe's up there just dumping his bucket right now. We've been kind of working together. It's definitely work on my part <laughs> to try to get him to work. Come on, Joe, come on back with me. Everybody else has made it to the end of the bed. So we need to catch up and then we're gonna go do the other new bed. What? Yeah, we made it. Not yet, we haven't even made it to the end yet. This is what a bucket of weeds look like, looks like, and we pull a whole lot of maples. You know, last year we actually had some people come out for a cranberry marsh tour, and Warren pulled them maples straight out of the cranberry bed, wrapped them in a wet paper towel, and they took them home. They could not believe that we pull maples and just let them die. Um, yeah, but maples grow like weeds, literally. All right, so we're finished up with that. I don't know how long that took. About hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 15, not bad. No. 
So, anyway, all right. Well, we need to make other things happen this day. 20 after? All right. Monday we started school. Uh, it's Friday, and we've kind of just lightly started school here so far. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys just a quick little peek at as to what we're doing right now. And I, I don't really have everything all mapped out 100% in the sense that I could do a whole video just dedicated to homeschooling. But I will just kind of show you a little bit here today. We are doing the Prairie Primer and this is something I've had for a couple of years. Just haven't, we just haven't done it. And what I like about this, this is really going to be our main school this year for both Joseph, Peter, and Maria. And what I like is that it really incorporates, first of all, it incorporates all the Little House on the Prairie series, all the books. And it's one book per month. We've already read all of the books and listened to all of the books. So that really isn't going to be all new to us. But we are going to go back through each one and we're going to work through like the literature, the science and writing. So this is a unit study approach where you take one topic and you extrapolate out all of the subjects from that one, um, from that one subject. Basically each day it has you reading one chapter, sometimes two chapters depending, it has some comprehension questions. We will do these verbally and then it has some literature. So in, in this section on this day we're learning about um, fiction and nonfiction, biographies and autobiographies, and kind of what that all means. Um, for science and writing, we're going to be studying grizzly bears. Uh, also for science, it is talking about preserving food, which we've been doing a lot of. So a lot of this, what I really like, is that it really incorporates what we're already doing as just our own life and sort of incorporates it right into our school. And it kind of helps all of us see that you can have a full, full learning um, just by living life. And so that's what we're working on. Right now though, so I did get the kids each their own um, Bibles. So we have a lot of like story Bibles that the kids use, but I wanted something where they actually had every book of the Bible, all the verses, that type of thing. So I picked up these, the Catholic Youth Bible. I can link, thing, link these on Amazon. That's where I bought them from. And then also to make it easy to find, I did pick up these tabbies. So tabbies, they come in all different colors and sizes and things like that. And you put them on, right, to mark? To mark the different pages, so like... You mark Grenna, Je Genesis, Genesis and Ex Exodus. Exodus and Leviticus. Yep, good Leviticus job. <laughs> and Numbers. Uh huh. And Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. And for Peter, I picked up, this is a different colorway. I think this was called the Coffee House colorway. So he's working on that. And it's just going to help us to be able to find the Bible verses and, and find really, the chapters. And it's really easy to do. It is easy to do. Um, and I also picked up the minis for my Bible as well. So I think this is just going to work out well because there is quite a bit of Bible study um, incorporated into this as well. And they talk about esteeming oneself higher than others. And what does the Bible say about that? And what does the Bible say about interrupting? Oh boy, I'm going to have to read that one. That's what we're going to be working on. So we're just kind of starting in on getting this ready. And then we also will be doing math today, a little bit later. But I think how I started talking about this here was that I'm working at block scheduling again. And so just staying focused. Really, that's all a block schedule is, is choosing and saying, I have a specific amount of time and I'm going to dedicate it to this. And I'm just going to put blinders on pretty much to everything else that's going on. Um, obviously, you have babies and toddlers. They need to eat. Some, they make a mess. Something, something happens and you have to just kind of account for all of that as part of your block schedule. But once you have that taken care of, you just get right back into what you were doing, staying focused, knowing that later you're going to have focus time for something else. 
So we are taking an hour and a half of focus time for school here. We're going to have lunch after lunch. We're going to take two hours of focus time to do outside work. Uh, we have to do some cleaning up of um, the chickens like watering dish and do some gardening, things like that. What else? I know I have some other things and then I also want to have about an hour of focus time later this afternoon where I make some phone calls and do some emails and stuff like that. So just kind of focus time throughout the day. All right, we're going to keep going. They're doing, they're doing great actually, really moving along well with this. Okay, so we are actually wrapping up for the day our uh what is this again our prairie primer mm -hmm. and the kids did a project on a grizzly bear the picture and now mom like did things did different things like omniv omnivore and we need to write the definition so i did eat everything and i'm gonna do some and so we have some definitions and then they also did a little report here and they're going to glue the report into their book and then we will just keep this going throughout the year so for each book like little house in the big woods is what we're working on right now and then everything will just go day by day at first i kind of thought about keeping it like sort of by subject keeping all of their uh, Bible, writing out the verses separate from their science type things, all of it separate. And I thought, why do it like that? Let's just keep it like a whole book of just everything that we do. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep it in a nice notebook. They'll glue pages into it. And again, I was thinking of doing a uh, binder, but sometimes binders get kind of bulky and I find that sometimes the pages start to rip out and then we have to use those like little white rings to hold everything in. So this is just what is going to work for us is using a notebook and lots and lots of glue sticks. And what does Peter have? So this is that new kind. Can I just open it for us to try it? Cause you want to open King, those. I saw one of the guys having it Yeah. and I guess they're not little cookies. They're actually Big cookies. Okay, you can open those, yes. And no one had any dessert with lunch, so he's going to open Ooh, up these new Girl Scout cookies. They smell like cinnamon. Well, the picture makes it look like they're Cinnamon Toast Crunch or something. But they're big. Oh, look at that. They have, like, frosting. Okay. Oh, my God. A little frosting on the back side? They smell like cinnamon. Oh, they smell really good. <laughs> With like maple. They do have a little hint of maple smell, don't they? Chew with your mouth closed, please. What do you think? It's like dry, oh. French toast. Dry French toast? Yep. With white frosting. Okay. You're gonna have to find Joe. Is he in his room? Mm-hmm. Bring him out here so he can try one too. All right, well, they're going to wrap. You've tasted that it's before? Like... We're going to wrap this up. I am going to, what am I going to do? I am going to head outside for some outside time now. It sounds like I'm taking a recess. I'm getting my outside time like I'm a little kid. Okay, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head outside. I need to water flowers. It did rain yesterday, but it seems like as the flowers get bigger, they almost shade the rain. And. Yeah. You know, if they're in pots, mm. the rain ends up going over the pot. You gonna try a cookie too? Yeah. Okay, you try it. It's good. <laughs> did you even yeah. did you even taste it before you gave it a thumbs up? Okay. Yeah. Try one. Um, I don't really want one right now, thanks. Here, just try like a little piece. I, I don't want to because then I'm gonna want the whole thing. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just getting outside here finally. I had forgotten before that I had to do, um, I'm doing IXL with Joseph, so we just kind of alternate back and forth, one day doing math, one day doing language arts. And so, um, and it just works best if I sit right there with him and do it, otherwise he'll just start clicking on everything. And I just don't think that he gets much out of it if I let him just do it on his own. So anyway, I had forgotten about that, so I sat down and did that, and that took us about a half an hour. And I'm finally outside. That's the point. And it is gorgeous. Look at it outside here today. It is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I can hear the guys mowing. I think both Warren and Sam are on mowers right now. I can hear that going out in the woods, and I'm just going to water flowers. Everything is starting to get kind of that uh, late summer 
they're just starting to look like they are getting kind of wore out almost. I do have to come through, I see, and do some snipping here and uh, get things watered. I am out again. So let me, let me give you a little rundown here with the fertilizer situation. Tiger Bloom, my favorite fertilizer, used to always be around $48 a gallon. This year, I mean, then it has gradually been going up over the years. This year, it got as high as something like $82 or $84, and I could not bring myself to buy it at that amount. Um, so I kind of just kept watching when it would dip back down at Amazon, and I would pick up a gallon. Uh, I did pick up a gallon when it was something like $62, and then I do think I picked up one more gallon when it was about that price again. Okay, in the meantime, I also had found a recipe on Pinterest for a homemade fertilizer that utilized only Epsom salt, uh, baking soda, and ammonia, liquid ammonia. And so I was using that on one plant just to kind of get a feel for how it was, that was a little dead branch, just to get a feel for how it was um, working. And at first I thought it was doing pretty, I thought it was working at first. And then after about a month, I noticed that that particular flower uh, was just seemed stunted and it was not doing as well as my tiger bloom plants. And I also even started to feel like it was almost maybe even dying. It was starting to just get almost uh, like yellowing through the veins of the of each leaf and it just wasn't doing well. So I actually tried it on a couple more plants. I gave actually like all my flowers, these flowers, those flowers over there, everything on the patio. I gave everything a couple weeks with that fertilizer when I was out of tiger bloom and I also didn't have any old, um, what's the other one, miracle Grow left any place. I had like literally sourced all of my little bits of fertilizer and had used up everything. And I didn't think that the plants were doing well at all. So I, compl I totally gave up using that homemade fertilizer. And that's when I believe I actually bought that third jug of Tiger Bloom. And I'm out. I'm already out of that which is really a bummer because I feel like I have a lot of growing season left here. I don't know if I'm gonna get, I think it's at 68 right now. So I'm not sure, I'm still unsure if I'm actually gonna buy a jug here in the next week or so or not. I don't know. <laughs> I do know that other things are going to be taking my time now. So I probably am not gonna have quite as much time for my flowers. The garden is really producing. Soon we're going to be loaded with tomatoes. Right now they're slowly coming. A few here, a few there. Just enough where we're just eating them fresh. But I do know there's gonna be a point where I'm going to have tomatoes too many to just eat fresh. And I'm gonna to have to start canning, which takes some time. So anyway. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the flower and fertilizer saga. Peter's walking over. He's got the cookbook. What did you find? <laughs> the, oh, does your old does your old cookbook have any cheesecake recipes? Like a like a baked cheesecake? Yeah. I do not have a baked cheesecake or recipe. Like a non -bake. Yes, this one has a no baked cheesecake. It should be in the dessert section and it's called strawberries right here uh nope that's the cherry cheese that's the christmas wreath that we make is are you in the dessert section okay cranberry pie ice cream pie sky high strawberry pie strawberries and cream pie right here this is a cheesecake pie it's a no bake cheesecake and yeah so you mix like the cream cheese with... Do we have strawberries? We do not have any strawberries right now. Mm -mm. We have blueberries in the freezer. You could make it into a blueberry cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That would be an option too. All right, well, I'm gonna keep on trimming back flowers here, trying to get these to kind of look um, nice again. <laughs> okay. Mm.
corn. All right. Okay, that's enough. Go put. Mm. Okay, that was a little much. They'll be happy though. They'll be really happy, won't they? There go, chickens. There go so much. Okay, just set them on the table. I know. Well, we're down to the garden now, and I'm surprised at just how yellow the beans are. And it doesn't seem like it's a lack of fertilizer because we've given them plenty of fertilizer this year. But anyway, uh, we're going to see, like, look at this. Like, this one's gorgeous. All the new leaves, gorgeous. But some of them, yellow. The corn doing well so you can see the cobs and they're starting to turn tan like there mm -hmm. and this one that's a good sign uh-oh oh, oh asian, no asian beetles no japanese beetles they're on top of each other yes they are all right well looks like the corn it's going to be a little bit before we get corn tomatoes are definitely Wonderful. ripening look at that look at down there we got a lot of red tomatoes there that we're going to have to pick. Oh boy, yes, it is coming. It is coming, Maria. <laughs> I'm not excited for uh -huh. bringing down the UTV and having to sort uh -huh. out the tomatoes in different crates. You don't like doing that? Nope. Hmm. Don't like that All right, well, we're going to first just pick beans and then we're going to go look at the cucumbers and see what we need to do for that. And mm -hmm. Joe, what are you going to pick? Tomatoes. Not yet. You come and pick the green beans with us. We don't have any pumpkins this year. Isn't that sad? Apple. Okay, we're in from the garden and there was a lot of stuff in the garden. Maria found. Uh, we found. Well, just a moment. <laughs> I won't put it in right now. Okay. But, okay um, what do you got? What do you got there? It. Just a minute. <laughs> just a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> Okay, turn it around so you we can see what you did. That worked. So we found a non, like a two ripe, over ripe cucumber, and I was so I want it to be fall <laughs> so bad, and I want to carve pumpkins. So what me and Peter did is we turned the cucumber into a cat. So we did whiskers and fur and eyes and a nose and a mouth. <laughs> and we even, so we put it in with toothpicks, but we cut this set off and hollowed it out. So we're going to put a candle in it and see what happens. And see what happens. And I just came in then to open up my Amazon packages here. And I'm just going to show you what I ordered. I've been kind of looking at Goodwill and I've been ordering a few things from Maria here for kind of the fall, I guess. Um, you know, she's she has like sandals that she always wears to church, but it's probably going to be getting closer to the time of wearing ballet flats. We did find a pair of black ones, which was nice at Goodwill, but we've been looking for a pair of lighter ones. Yeah, so we picked these up. We first ordered a two, and they were way too big. How are those? Too small? Way, way too small. Oh my goodness. Well, that is a bummer. We ordered a two, and they were too big for her. Like her foot just and flopped so all over. Cute. And this is the one. And I love them so hmm. much. So our granddaughter's birthday, her first birthday is coming up. And um, I thought that it would be kind of fun to pick her up some clothes. I, I do love buying clothes. I mean, honestly, guys, I do. Whether they are rummage sale clothes, secondhand store clothes, brand new clothes, online clothes. I do. I love buying clothes. So anyway... I picked up these two little uh, fall dresses. These are so cute. And I do like, this is the Hudson Baby. I've ordered a lot of things over the years in that Hudson Baby brand. I really like it. It's from Amazon. 
And the thing that I like too is let's say that you have, so like you click on the Hudson Baby, these they call these I think like quilted dresses. And then let's say you just want to stay in a budget. You just click on the size and then go through every colorway and see which set is the cheapest. I think I got these two dresses for right about $7. And I don't know why this colorway was so inexpensive that day, but um, yeah, I picked them up because it was just such a great, such a great price. And the prices will vary all over the place. Sometimes two dresses will be 17. A different color uh, will be, you know, six or seven dollars. So that's that's what I do. I just go through and I look at whatever is the least expensive. And as long as it's a color that I think is pretty cute, then that's what I end up buying. Okay, so these are for her. And then I thought some little leggings or something to put with these. She's she's gonna be walking any day now, so these are gonna be perfect for her. I don't know about this. You don't know about this one? So I picked up this dress. I thought it was really pretty for like a winter dress. It's a sweater material. Yeah, sweater material. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to put it What on? is it that you don't know about? Is it the color? Is it the style? Kind of the style. I this type of material, kind of puffier sleeves with the. You don't really like the I'll puffy put sleeves. It on. Okay, you try it on I'll and report it. back. Okay, the verdict is good. She said she loves how she looks in it, but she's just still not sure about the fabric. You have a hair in your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, we can kind of see you there. Mm -hmm. I look. Lovely. Great. <laughs> You're funny. But, like, I don't know. I don't normally wear this type of, dress, well, it's, this type of material. That type of material. It's kind of weird right now because we're coming off of summer dresses. Well, the, the kitchen has been a busy place, and I forgot to do any filming, but Peter just made a cheesecake. His first time making a... Making a like fully cooked cheesecake and actually Warren came in at the perfect time I was gonna do potato pancakes I got everything mixed up and he came in he's like hey are they ready to grill or whatever it is fry and I said yes so he's doing that and then I made maple syrup so this recipe is in my first cookbook here it is I just mix brown sugar white sugar corn syrup salt and water bring it to a boil for three minutes and then turn it down for a little while um, and then I add in some maple extract and vanilla extract, mix it up, and it just makes syrup. Other things going in the kitchen is Maria is still working on math here for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. She's kind of doubling, right? Because you had to do it from yesterday. Yeah. And now today. So anyway, that's what's kind of going down in the kitchen. Warren and I left the kids in the house to do dishes. <laughs> I was like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is our Wolf River tree. And I just wanted to check, you think that's a good one? That'll be a good one. Okay, I just wanted to check each tree and see if they're ripe because that would mean we could start making applesauce. That does not even sound right, does it? It just has that sound of... No. The seeds still have a ways say, to go. Yeah, I would say that that's not ready. Okay. There. <laughs> Pretty tart. It's not ready. Not ready. Yeah, I think so too. This tree isn't much to look at, that's for sure. Well, it's, it's had a tough life. It has. The main trunk died. And then the secondary trunk isn't doing real well. No. Nope. But it has apples. Yes, it does. Is there a certain one you want me to pick? I don't know. Maybe this one right here. It plucks right off. Yeah. Sounds better. It does sound a little bit better. And let's see. Seeds are brown. They're browner. Mm -hmm. I would say that if we wanted to make applesauce out of these, we probably could. Are they sweet enough, though? It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good? I'll take this half. I mean, it's tart. It's pretty tart. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't have that Wolf River. This no, I is didn't. like a dream compared to that one. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to pick them tonight, but maybe 
next week. Next week, sure. That would be the plan. Then this tree, I don't know, whatever, whatever apple you want. Whatever apple I want? Yep. Guessing it's going to be one. Oh, look at that. Plucked nicely. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one really sounds nice. It would help if I got to the center here That's to take a bite. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Hey. Mm. Mm hmm. Seeds are still white. Mm. It tastes good. Yes or no? Yeah, that could go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we got three more. Right there. That's the one? That's the one. No, it doesn't come up very easy. No. Oh, this might be a mackinac. White seeds. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. Not great. Needs more time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, this tree doesn't have a big crop, but... Let's see what we got going here. Mm -hmm. Uh, seeds are fairly... Actually, yeah. How's that one? One's good. I mean, the seeds are dark. Well, mm -hmm. half dark. Mm -hmm. They're dark. Mm -hmm. Flavor's good. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Mm -hmm. Pretty dark, but very juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the verdict is we're going to actually give the apple trees a couple more weeks. I wanted to double check them because I've... I know that some people are already picking apples and making applesauce, and so I thought, well, I better give our apples a check they're too, too young yet. Yeah, they're just a little too young. I think we do have a tree that we could pick next week, but maybe maybe we'll just kind of start on making some apple pies or doing something like that next week. I like that idea. <laughs> and do the apple bulk slices. of the do the bulk of the applesauce uh, next week. Yeah, apple slices. That's in the new cookbook. Great. <laughs> Make them. So that's one of Warren's favorites. It's basically just flat apple pie with frosting. frosting. You guys yes. know how much he loves his glaze. Oh yeah. <laughs> and frosting. Yeah. <laughs> so, well that's going to be it for today's video. It's a Friday night. I know Peter has some hopes of watching Deadliest Catch. Mm -hmm. He, we just started talking about that today. Somehow we got talking about lobster this morning while we were out weeding and uh, that came up. I mean, it's not lobster that they're fishing for on Deadliest Catch, right? King crab. King crab, okay. so But anyway, we started talking about that, and he was like, oh, I kind of would like to watch that. So I think we're going to give that a try tonight, and then that's going to be it. Maybe a little fishing. Oh, yeah, he did say he wanted to go fishing. Are you guys going, or what's... Yeah, I think so. All I right. don't know. It depends. I'm kind of tired. Okay, well, who knows what's going to happen. Some fishing, some TV. We'll see. All right, you guys have a great uh, day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. See ya. <laughs>